What is going on, y'all? I hope that you, all of you out there, are having a wonderful day. My name is Jonathan Yench. For those of you who are new to this channel, welcome. Thank you for joining in. Thank all of you guys for tuning in to yet another video. Now, as you guys see behind me, this is not the truck camper that you're used to seeing in the last few videos. I have been working on renovating a vintage truck camper. If you guys aren't already aware, I've been posting quite a lot of videos about that in the past. So the purpose of this video is I basically wanna show you guys my kind of last minute setup that I threw together. I have been truck slash, not really truck camping, I've been car camping for a few years now, so I kind of have a good idea of what is essential, what you're going to need while you're out there on the road, and how to set things up in a way that is gonna be conducive for you to enjoy enjoy your time and be able to stay organized as much as possible, et cetera, et cetera. So I did throw this together very last minute and it is a pretty minimalist setup. I know that there's a lot cooler build outs where people actually use like carpentry skills and they build like cabinets and drawers and all that fun stuff, but mine is not that. Mine is very bare bones. So I just want to describe that to you guys so you guys could get an idea of maybe what you can do if you're kind of either on a budget or you want to test the waters to see if this is something you want to continue doing before you dive head in and build some crazy cool build out in your rig. Or maybe you just would rather have a very minimalist, easy and low maintenance setup like the one that I'm going to show you guys today. So Whatever your reason for tuning into this video, thank you again, and let's just jump in and I'll show you guys a little bit around. Now, I would first like to start off by talking about the truck itself. It is a year 2000 Toyota Tacoma. It's the V6 3.4 liter 5V ZFE engine for those of you who are curious. It does have 250,000 miles, and yes, that definitely sounds like a lot, but these engines are known to be bulletproof and they go to like 400,000 apparently. At least I'm hoping. The shell, it's just a used, beat up, high top shell that I found on Craigslist. Luckily, it was specifically made for this truck and no bells or whistles. If you are if if you know anything about these shells, you know that they could cost upwards of like $2,000 if you were to go get one new from like one of the truck shell manufacturers. But this one I got for about 350 bucks, which in my opinion is a steal. Yeah, that's pretty much everything about the truck. I don't know what else to say. So I guess I'll just jump on in and start showing you guys how I have it set up for camp. Oh, I did forget to mention that the Tacoma is four-wheel drive, obviously. Why have a truck if you're not going to have four-wheel drive, right? Shots fired. First of all, I have my very basic sleeping platform. There are no drawers like some of the other cooler builds you see underneath. Instead, I just have a couple of plastic tubs. I'll show you what's exactly in those tubs a little bit later. And originally, I was actually going to just sleep in the bed of the truck, but I am going into some wintry conditions. And if I were to sleep directly on the bed of the truck, even with my insulated sleeping pad, it would be freezing cold. So instead, I opted to use this sleeping platform and utilize the extra space underneath it. And on top of that, I have my Thermarest z Light Sole sleeping pad. I am going to use my small little memory foam mattress topper pad that I got at Home Depot as well. I just forgot it back where I'm sleeping, so it's not in this shot. On top of that, we have my zero degree never summer sleeping bag made by Marmot. It's extremely warm, and like I said, it's going to be extremely cold where I'm going, so that's why I'm opting for the thicker sleeping bag. I'll probably add some extra blankets as well. Now, tucked over here, if I could get it out, I have this cool little brand new buddy heater that I just got. Apparently it is indoor safe. I see a lot of people on YouTube using them for camping, truck camping, ice fishing, all that kind of stuff in like really cold temperatures. So I'm hoping that it will keep me safe and warm in this blizzard that I'm about to go camping in. It runs off of propane, the little Coleman green canisters of propane. You guys have all seen them. And what's cool about that is I also have a Coleman stove that runs on those. So I could just power both my heater and the Coleman two burner stove with the cans and this little guy just fits right over here and that's that. Now since that is a propane burning heater, I do want to be safe. So I got a carbon monoxide alarm that I stuck up here on the truck shell. It's just Velcroed on. So that's just, you know, so I don't get carbon monoxide poisoning and pass away while I'm sleeping because that would really suck. After I use the heater a little bit more, I probably will make a video more specifically about the heater, like a review or a user experience and that kind of thing. So make sure to 
keep your eyes peeled for that. As for privacy, I made these window covers out of roll-up Reflectix insulation. I actually have a video dedicated to how you can make your own insulated window covers, and I'll leave that linked in the description box down below. Now, moving on to the right side of the truck shell, we have two storage bins. They hold a combination of camping gear, things like my tents, sleeping pads, backpacking pillows, extra fuel, my camping stove, all that fun stuff. Yeah, there's not much to say about that other than they are held in place by a tie down. So that way when I'm driving, things don't go flying everywhere. All right, so over here, over here we have my very cool brand new Jackery Explorer 1000. It is a portable power bank. So that way I'm able to keep all my devices charged. I'm able to use this cool little light that I have rigged up here. And I just got it, it's brand new. I am going to be making a video about this device as well. That's gonna be coming out next week. So make sure to tune back in then if you're interested in watching that. But I have that tied down here with some bungee cords. That way this doesn't go flying around while I'm driving. But I'm super stoked to try this out. Haven't used it yet, but I think it's gonna be very, very beneficial to have while you're camping. So these are those plastic storage containers that I was talking about. In this one, I have things like, you know, this is actually basically just my camp kitchen. So I have pots, pans, knives, utensils, olive oil, salt, that kind of stuff. And over here in this one, I just have some random miscellaneous tools. I got some wipes, some tape, scissors, all kinds of just random little things, batteries, WD-40, eyeglasses. Um, other random miscellaneous stuff like that that might come in useful. I do wanna take a second to just point out this nifty little thing. This is a Snow Peak cutting board knife combination and it's extremely useful because it just folds right up and the knife is inside. Snow Peak makes phenomenal gear. You guys are probably already aware of that. Kind of on the pricey side, this surprisingly is really cheap for Snow Peak. And yeah, this thing is a saver because it really maximizes space and I think it's super cool. I'll leave links to all of this gear in the description if you're interested in checking those out. Okay, so that's pretty much the back of the truck itself. I do wanna quickly pop up front and show you guys what I have in the cab. It is worth seeing, I guess, right? I don't know, let's just go check it out. The beautiful part of having the extra cab is not only do you have extra seats to squeeze people in if you really need to, and I mean squeeze because they're really tiny seats. Big people would not fit back there. Someone short like me, probably, but chances are a big person, no. But the main reason why, sorry. The main reason why the extra cab is so useful is because it's extra room to store stuff, which I think is really cool. And plus, I don't know how secure the camper shell itself is. So if there's things that are really valuable, really valuable, you wanna keep them in the truck cab itself. So let's check out what I have in here. It's nothing too exciting, but I figured I might as well show you what I have. Got an extra towel here. I've got a Duralast set of, um, sockets and wrenches and all that cool stuff. Definitely if you're going to be living in a car or driving an old car, you want to have some kind of tools so you can fix things while you're on the road. I've got a little running pouch thing I'm a bobber that I use when running. Got an extra hoodie here, a backpack that I use for fishing or shorter day hikes, extra sleeping bag. This is just a package, don't worry about that. And I have some water here. Oh, almost forgot. This is my reusable Trader Joe's bag because we're saving the planet one plastic bag at a time. Towel fell down here. I also have these Birkenstock sandals because it's always good to have sandals while you're in the car. Got a couple more of those C-clamps, the caulking gun don't really need to carry that around, but it just happens to be in my truck right now. And paper towels, which are definitely an essential. Got some leather working gloves and a screwdriver. There's another one here somewhere. We got a Phillips and a slotted head screwdriver. And there's my backpack. This front seat would usually have my camera bag. In the back, I would probably also put the cooler. I don't exactly have a cooler right now and I do want to get one in the near future so Yeti 
if you're watching this or Arctic, if you're watching this, feel free to send me a sample, slide into my uh, Gmail, right? Just kidding. But if you are, that would be really cool. And I would love to sample your coolers because I heard they're A1. As far as my tires go, I use the Falcon Wild Peak AT3W and these are phenomenal tires. They have an aggressive tread. They're super grippy. They don't make too much noise on the road. I'm extremely satisfied and happy with them. These ones are size 31, 10, 5, R15s. Okay, and that's gonna do it for this video. I, I apologize if it was really rushed, if everything felt rushed. To be honest, it was extremely rushed, just like the truck build out itself. This is a very last minute video. I hope to get it edited tonight and then post it tomorrow. Like I said, this was just a quick overview of the last minute truck camper shell setup that I have going on right now. I probably will make some more videos, a little bit more detail, more in depth about some of the gear that I use, what I bring with me when I go camping and hiking and backpacking, all the gear that I use, that kind of fun stuff. So if you're interested in that, make sure to drop a comment down below and tell me exactly what kind of video you guys want to see. There will be links for all of this gear in the description box below. They will be affiliate links. So if you do buy anything using the link in the description box, I will get a little cut back and I would just really appreciate it because that would help support this channel and help me make more videos. Make sure to stay tuned. On Sunday, I'm gonna be posting a video about the blizzard truck camping that I'm going to be partaking in tomorrow. So wish me luck with that. And with that, I will let you guys get on with the rest of your day. Thank you very much for watching. Go out there, go on some adventures of your own, live life, beat the status quo, do all of that fun stuff. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you guys very soon in the next video.